Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about the Dutch auction. I'm going to tell you exactly where I'm looking to buy the different plots of land and where you might want to consider doing so for your own personal benefit, okay? And as always, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Please always do your own research. I'm making up these charts and graphs and things to help you guys make up your own decisions on what you should do about land and how you might want to approach it for your own personal situation. So don't take this as financial advice. It applies differently to everyone. And I'm just trying to give you guys the tools and resources necessary to help you make your decisions. So the land sale date was just announced June the 2nd, which is a Thursday at 9 a.m. UTC. I think it's like a 10 p.m. or something on the Thursday for us Australians. So it's really exciting. I'm very, very excited to get involved, to play the game, to buy my own land. I really want to get a T2 or a T3 plot just so you guys know where I'm coming from. But it's looking more like I'm going to be able to get a T2 maybe than anything else. So here are the land prices and they descend really, really quickly. That is the first thing we should definitely mention here. Whoops, it zoomed in the wrong spot. That is the first thing we should definitely mention. You go, in terms of SILV2 cost on like a T1 land, in 10 minutes, you drop three, which is like 25%. It's not quite, but it is a lot. You hit about halfway at about 30 minutes and each batch of land sale goes for two hours. They overlap after an hour and next batch will start but they go for two hours and the land sale is currently set up to go over a period of three days. So definitely keep that in mind. That is really important information. Three days for the land sale. So there's lots of time to make decisions. People believe that in day two, the FOMO won't really be there and people will be kind of be more expectant of prices to drop and things. So that might be your best bet at getting the cheapest possible land as FOMO will kick in towards the end of the sale as well. All those that missed out on buying when they thought it could go lower and it didn't. All right, it's just that simple. So a few really key things I should mention about the data I put into this. And don't worry, I've got some graphs coming up in a second. It's going to be really informative, really useful. Don't worry. Holders. So there are actually 900 more holders than this, so closer to 4,600. Uh, but in this case, I have 3,730. And I've set the ILV price. SILV2 has the buying power of ILV during the land sale. And the Ethereum price, they're relatively arbitrary. It moves around a lot, but I think this is kind of their average at the moment. They could be a lot higher or lower by the time the sale comes around. Crypto can move very, very fast. Also, I'm only considering that 20,000 plots are being sold. Now, the next thing we need to really quickly discuss is down here. So I've got required SILV2 and required SILV2 if you don't include the T4 land. And what am I trying to figure out here? At 80 minutes, so after 40 minutes have passed, at that point, if every single land dropped 40 minutes before people purchased, then every single SILV2 could be used up to purchase the entire lot. That is just, I mean, in this case, it's for everything except T4. It can be used for the first three tiers. At 60 minutes, it can be used for every single tier. Okay, every single tier could be bought up with the amount of SILV2 circulating. I have knocked out a bunch of the holders that have been priced out, so I'm not considering them in this calculation, but I've really only knocked out about 10 or so SILV2 in circulation, and I knocked out 900 holders. So they seem negligible and a bit of an outlier to me, um, do with that what you will. They might buy things down the road, but until we know that, that is all even more speculation than this already is. So we're not going to make guessing games on people buying more SRV2 or claiming the rewards. That is a lot of guessing games. I might be able to update you guys in the future. So do not forget to subscribe down below. I really appreciate it. This took me a lot of time. I'm glad I get to show you guys finally. I've been working on this one for a while. Okay. So that's that, that's how much. So the other major aspect I'm looking at right now is what I'm calling in my own head, something called the whale factor. So I'm trying to figure out how many percentage of holders can buy a piece of land or two or even three plots of that same land. Because what you guys need to learn, especially about NFT sales in general, 
is the whales dominate it. They control everything. If they want it to be a certain price, it will be that price. They may try to figure out where retail is sitting and then bet just above them. So if retail is waiting for 30 minutes later, they might start to figure that out. And by about day two or day three, they're putting in bids at 25 minutes later instead, five minutes before retail is stepping back in. So that is what I'm calling the whale factor. And I'm trying to use that to figure out averages and where the whales might be sitting, what makes sense for them. So let's jump straight into some of my charts, okay? I'm gonna move my thing out of the way so you guys can see it a bit better. Hopefully this zoom isn't too much. Nah, it's too much, I'm gonna leave it. All right, so the T1 land. Now the average of, so this average here that I've got is the blue line, right? This is buying three plots, what two plot, one plot. It's It's pretty much all of my numbers over everything, okay? Summed up into one average. So the average of if some, the percentage of holders that can buy one, two or three plots across all the different lands. Um, and then that average is being plotted on this graph to show kind of like where some of these intersections might occur and where whales might be sitting to pick it up. It's a really hard concept to explain, but I'm gonna really try my best. So if all of the lands decrease at the same rate, right? This is this is what happens in the land sale in the Dutch auction. They all decrease at the same rate. You have to assume a lot of people are waiting at about the same percentage for a lot of them. I know this might not really work out that way, but if they have a really similar percentage location for a couple of the lands, then it would make sense that they do that for a lot of the lands. And also they're trying to price out retail here. So what you can see is that Personally, I believe most people that buy a T1 or a T2 will be going for two plots. And why do I say that? Because most NFT purchases are used to having two or three mints for any NFT sale, sometimes more. What that allows them to do is keep one plot and sell one for a profit, especially a 2X, to return their initial investment. So I'm trying to find out if people can buy two plots and how that stacks up with the rest of the data. It's I can't really explain it too much further beyond that, but that's just kind of what's going on in my head. So with the T2 land, it starts to get really interesting. That overall average for all the plots descending at the same rate actually starts to intersect with people being able to buy two plots, a large amount of people being able to buy two plots at about the 90 minute mark. Now I really don't see that happening. 90 minutes is not long, but it is about a 50% drop from the initial prices, which could hold some value as well. The other side of it is that at about the 40 to 30 minute mark, about 35 minutes, it also intersects with three plots. That is where the whales get to make the massive, massive move on the market is where they can pick up three or four plots of a lot of these land pieces at about that 40 minute mark, okay? So it's descended from 120, it's come all the way down 80 minutes and you hit 35. So we'll have a look at T3 and we're looking at a really similar thing. At about the 35 minute mark, they're able to grab three, no, able to grab one T3 plot. That is crazy. That is pretty much in the exact same location. It's getting really close as the other ones. Now in this case, it's really hard for them to grab two or even three plots. There's not that many people waiting there. Around 15 to 20% is able to get two or three plots. And those two lines are quite close together, which I think is really interesting to consider. These lines in T1 are always naturally gonna be close together um, because the prices don't differ too much. But you'll see these ones on T2 are actually quite far away. There's like 20, 15 to 20% between all of these lines of holders that can grab more than one plot. But you're looking at T3 and the split is huge. The T1 plots at about 35 minutes, barely anyone can get um, two or three of those plots. And you start to come down to T4 and it gets, the gap is even wider. And it really does tick up at about that 35%, 35 minute mark like the other lands. And it just the one plot is so much further away and it gets, see, that's the beauty of it, right? This is the really interesting thing we should mention is that the T, the, the one plot gets further and further away as time goes on. And that's really, really interesting as that distance starts to really open 
it really enables a lot more buyers to come in and buy the land. And there's a lot more demand sitting at those prices. So I fully expect T3 and T4 at least around the 40 to 30 minute mark, okay? Probably closer to 50 minutes, but around that 40 minute period, 40 minutes remaining in the sale, I expect buyers to come in on T3 and T4 based on these sorts of figures and how the whales might be able to behave here. As for T2, it's a lot harder to say. It looks like 50 minutes is when the lines are actually quite close, uh, starting to really separate from each other. So 50 minutes might be a stronger thing here. T1 is really hard to predict because so many people can afford a T1 even at max price. And after about 10, 20 minutes, the majority of SRV2 holders can afford it. Now, I'm not really looking at Ethereum here. It doesn't interest me too much. I know a lot of you guys have SRV2. I can make another video maybe, but I don't really know what I would cover in it, apologies. So this one is the averages. This is if they can buy one, two or three plots, that's all averaged and then across the main averages. And we're looking at it come apart at the start and then come closer together at the end. So it's really interesting, but I'm seeing a lot of split in the amount of lands that are coming out here um, at about the 50 to 40 minute mark as well. but. This, these averages are so straight that I can't really make heads of tails of this chart specifically. So I think looking at the individual lands is really helpful. And as I said before, T3 and T4 is telling me that around 40, 35 minutes of time remaining is when a lot of these higher tier lands could be bought up. Okay, so I hope you guys found that fascinating and interesting. I had a lot of fun putting that one together. Please don't forget to like and subscribe down below. I should also mention that the Emergent DAO Discord, okay? That is a GameFi setup that has lots of different content creators from lots of different games. I will have a whitelist um, a whitelist application form in the description down below. I'd love to see you guys' thoughts and concerns about the Emergent DAO. And if you want to get in, if you want to get involved, they have their NFT Mint running from now until the end of May. So if you want to get involved, submit that application form. Um, someone will have a look at it and we'll, we'll see if you're eligible and if you've, if you're really passionate about NFT gaming and you're passionate about becoming the best you can in NFT gaming, that is really what Emergent DAO is looking for. So if you're interested in that NFT sale, they're going to have beta setups, creator grants, all sorts of stuff. They're going to be helping out those contributors. They contribute to their community in so many different ways. There's so much going on. Jump in the Discord. There'll be white paper and stuff in the description as well. Have a good day, guys.